Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Being Funny Conversation Cheat Sheet. Want to be able to tell jokes in your target language? Or tell someone how funny or unfunny they are? You will with this brand new cheat sheet. Second, all the language you need for everyday life. Get all of our best conversation cheat sheets rolled up into one with this gift. Download it right now before it disappears. Third, must know book vocabulary. If you love reading and want to talk about books, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, Phrases to use with the doctor. Learn how to say phrases like, I have an appointment, I don't feel well, and much more. Fifth, summer plans conversation lesson. Can you talk about your summer plans? Such as, go travel, relax at the beach, or stay at home and sit on the internet. You will with this one minute lesson. Access it right now. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off premium or premium plus with the pretty big deal sale. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is 10 Habits of Highly Effective Language Learners. Do you feel like you're not making much language progress? That you could do better, but you're just not sure what step to take? In today's episode, you'll discover the top 10 habits of effective language learners and what these learners do differently. Do you have any of these habits? Keep watching to find out. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Being Funny Conversation Cheat Sheet. Want to be able to tell jokes in your target language? Or tell someone how funny or unfunny they are? You'll learn how with this brand new cheat sheet. Second, all the language you need for everyday life. Get all of our best conversation cheat sheets rolled up into one. This bundle will get you speaking more. Download it right now before it disappears. Third, must know book vocabulary. If you love reading and want to talk about books, check out this one minute lesson. It'll teach you all of the must know vocabulary. Fourth, phrases to use with the doctor. Learn how to say phrases like, I have an appointment, I don't feel well, and much more. Fifth, summer plans conversation lesson. Can you talk about your summer plans? Like take a trip and relax at the beach or stay at home and sit on the internet? You'll be able to with this one minute lesson. 10 habits of highly effective language learners. If you walk away from this lesson and remember only one habit, let it be this one. Habit number one, setting small, measurable goals with a deadline. For example, do 30 of our language lessons by the end of this month. 30 is small. You're not learning the whole language here. It's measurable. Either you did 28 or you hit 30. And you know when to reach it by, which gives you motivation. Let's expand on this point even further. You should also set goals for every study session. For example, if your goal is to do 30 lessons in a month, and if a month has 30 days, you know you need to do one lesson a day. Our lessons can be anywhere from 3 to 15 minutes long. That gives you your goal for the day. For your study session, do one lesson and spend up to 15 minutes on it. That way, you're not confused about what to do or how long to study for. You know what you can expect to accomplish. Another powerful lesson here is that goals take away anxiety. Here's why. Imagine you set a big, vague goal, like, I want to be fluent someday. You don't have a plan, but you buy a textbook. You read the first chapter, and then you start worrying about whether you're really learning. You don't know how far you should go, and you have no real plan or specific goal. Then you start worrying about if you'll ever be fluent, so you lose motivation and quit. But if you set a small goal, you know you need to do just one lesson a day. 15 minutes. That's it. Habit number two, creating routines. This ties back to the first habit. 
If you set a goal like do 30 lessons in one month, you know that you need to do one lesson a day. This is how you create your routine. You should decide when and where to study as well. Even if you're putting in just five minutes a day, you have to know when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time, make a mental note that this time is language time and say no to other things that come up. Just like you know when it's time to brush your teeth, you should know when it's time to do a little language learning. Creating and sticking with a routine is a great habit to have because the routine is what turns your goals into reality. Habit number three, don't cram. Most of us crammed back in school. We'd wait till the last day, then study for five hours. Even if you pass the test, you still forget it all. But with language, you want to remember it so you can use it. Luckily, our lessons are short and sweet, so you're not spending hours on your studies. The point is that five minutes a day every day is better than doing five-hour cram sessions and burning yourself out. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. What do we mean by prepare? Imagine you want to open a bank account in your target language. You can show up at the front desk and grunt and point and try to communicate with body language. Or you can prepare. You look up words like bank account, open, and all the relevant phrases. Or even easier, you can find a lesson on our site. If you want to prepare for daily conversations, then check out our top 25 questions you must know for conversations lessons. These teach you how to ask and answer basic questions like, how are you? How was your weekend? And much more. In fact, most of our lessons are based around practical daily dialogues. We give you the exact lines to say, whether for conversations with friends, for shopping, or for opening a bank account. So preparing is a must. It gives you a foundation of words and phrases you can use. It places you miles ahead of other learners. Number five, get into the habit of producing output. Input is taking language in, listening and reading. Output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The big point here is that it's very easy to sit back and listen and read. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. Here are some of the easiest ways to produce output. For speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. For writing, copy out the lesson vocabulary and dialogue by hand. Again, you need to practice. Habit number six, come back and review. A lot of times, what we learn goes in one ear and out the other, which means we don't really learn. This is where reviewing comes in. When you're done with a lesson, come back a few days later and do another round. You'll likely come across words and phrases you've forgotten or even easier, download the dialogue track or the lesson notes and review those at a later date. Number seven, look for solutions. An important difference between experienced learners and new learners is in how they react when they don't understand something. Inexperienced learners rely completely on their study tools and tend to blame the tools for their lack of progress. You'll often hear people talk about giving up because a textbook was too boring or because the textbook didn't teach them to speak. Experienced learners look for solutions. If they realize a specific study tool, like a textbook, isn't going to help them speak, they look for a better solution. Textbooks can teach you grammar and vocabulary words, so they're valuable resources. But if speaking is your goal, you have to look for ways to practice speaking, like reading out loud or working with a conversation partner. Number eight, focus on what you're good at. The reason we say this is because it's good for motivation overall. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. That means it's a successful routine, and routines are what turn your goals into reality. Number nine, don't procrastinate. This is easier said than done, but it's important. A lot of us procrastinate as a result of overthinking. For example, let's say you plan on studying for an hour today. So you remember, ah, I have to study tonight for a whole hour. I don't think I have the time. It's gonna be hard, but I should really try. And it becomes something you have to do, which is a hassle. You've already ruined it for yourself in your head. But if you have a small and measurable goal and an easy routine, just five minutes a day, for example, that's not much work to do. Five minutes and you're done. If you wanna beat procrastination, make sure to make your goals and routines easy and realistic. Number 10. Remember that learning a language is a marathon and not a sprint. It's a long-term game. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day or if you missed a goal, that doesn't mean it's all over. It's just a minor stumble in the grand scheme. So let's recap. Number one, get into the habit of setting small, measurable goals. 
Number two, create a routine. Number three, don't cramp. Number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. Number five, get into the habit of producing output. Number six, come back and review. Number seven, look for solutions. Number eight, focus on what you're good at. Number nine, don't procrastinate. Number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon and not a sprint. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real-life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. 
After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. If you want to learn a language, but don't have a lot of time to dedicate to the endeavor, you need to study as efficiently as possible. You probably aren't a language learning expert or a world traveler. You might have school, or a job, or two. So in this video, we'll give you three ways to help you learn language more efficiently so that you get the most out of your time and effort. Number one, use your time when you have it. The most valuable resource you have as a language learner is time. While you may not have to spend money to learn a language, you will have to spend time. Hours and minutes are a currency that you trade on a weekly basis to grow in your language learning. Language learning is probably a priority for you. It might not be the number one priority, like keeping your job or taking care of your family, but it does have to be important enough for you to invest significant amounts of time into your learning. There's just no way around it. That being said, use your time wisely. Because of previous commitments, you can quickly fall into the trap of putting your language learning off, thinking, oh, I'll do it next week, or Saturday, I'll do it Saturday. Needless to say, a few weeks can go by and you haven't really learned or practiced anything. If you find that happening, then take some time and reevaluate your approach. It's probably a long shot for you to be able to spend hours every day learning a new foreign language, but you can use your time to spend an hour or even just 10 minutes a day, every day, studying or practicing. If you're on a busy schedule, an hour a day can sound like reaching for the stars, so start slowly with just a five minute lesson. Over time, as you learn more and it becomes more routine, you'll want to spend more time studying. And your studying doesn't even need to be all at once. Make use of the little gaps of time you have in the day. Listen to a podcast while driving to and from work. Review new words while on lunch break or right before bed. Even a quick review while in line at the store or waiting for the bus. Together, these moments add up. This way, your little study session will add up to around 60 minutes of practice every day. You'll quickly be able to see significant improvement in your language abilities. Number two, don't method jump. When you're new to language learning, there's a temptation to try out the newest course, app, or method. There are more language learning tools and courses than I can list. But jumping around from podcast to podcast or from textbook to textbook can really hinder your learning process. It's important to find the best method for you, but when you do, stick with it. Don't get distracted by the newest app, or if you suddenly find something faster, cheaper, claiming it can teach you a language with no work on your part. Stick with your learning course or tool. Consistent practice over a period of time is what is essential for language learning. If you hit a bump or plateau, you might be tempted to think, maybe there's a faster or better way to learn. So you search around and buy the next best language learning tool, only to use it for a couple weeks and realize it wasn't really any better than the last course you tried, and the same difficulties you had are still there. If you're learning your first new language and you pick a specific method or course, we suggest you stick with it for at least three to four months. You actually hurt yourself in the long run if you constantly switch between resources because you never give yourself the opportunity to progress. Number three, focus on one thing at a time. When you decide to learn a new language, you're gonna be really excited. You have all your resources lined up, a plan in place, and you're ready to go. You think you'll spend three to four hours a day practicing and that you'll be fluent in no time, but that's only for about three days. Then you probably will get a little bit discouraged and avoid it for another three days. And this process might repeat three or four times before you realize that you might be approaching things the wrong way. You can't devour a whole new language in a very short time. You'll burn out immediately. It's better to focus on one small part of the language at a time, either a specific grammar point or a specific vocabulary topic. In the beginning, these should be based on the parts of the language you'll use right away. Even in the business world, research shows that replacing less important tasks with ones that add value and help you reach your goals is the best way to get the most out of your time. As you advance through the language and your level increases, try to pinpoint the harder aspects of the language and work on them one at a time. Learning a foreign language isn't easy. It takes time and work, but it is possible. If you stick to your learning plans and stay focused, you will see improvement in your skills and find satisfaction in using the language. Remember that learning a language is really more like a journey. It doesn't have to feel like school or work. Savor your experience with learning and enjoy every step along the way. There's a saying that trust is hard to earn, yet easy to lose. The same can be said for foreign language skills. 
Being proficient in a new language takes hours of practice and study. But if you stop using the language, it will fade from your memory. To put it simply, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's why it's so important to incorporate the language into your daily life as much as possible if you're serious about learning. But how do you do that if you don't live in the country? In this video, we'll look at five ways you can use your target language on a daily basis and immerse yourself in the language, even if you don't live near native speakers. Number one, live your digital life in your target language. As access to technology increases, people are living more and more of their lives on the internet. Use this lifestyle of constant connection to your advantage. Most devices, laptops, phones, tablets, or other connected gadgets have an option to put their operating system in another language. Why not put the devices you use in the language you're studying? Just scrolling through things on your smartphone won't make you fluent, but it will force you to interact with the language every day in a small way. When it comes to foreign language acquisition, every little bit helps. You can even switch your social media platforms or web browsers to your target language. The time you spend on your devices now becomes study time. Number two, relax in your target language. Everybody likes to kick back and entertain themselves in some way. Why not use this part of your day to learn more? Try looking for TV shows, music, or movies in your target language. You can use subtitles or follow along by reading lyrics if your level in the language is on the lower side. It also helps if you approach this language learning time as fun and not work. Don't force yourself to watch movies you don't like or listen to a kind of music you have no interest in. The point is to keep a casual, relaxed study environment. Number three, journal or keep a diary in your target language. It might not be so common to write out your thoughts or the events of your day in a journal anymore, but it can be a great language learning habit. You can do this by writing by hand in a notebook or on a laptop using a foreign language keyboard. That way you don't have to worry about your handwriting and can even practice typing in your target language. As you try to express your thoughts in a foreign language, you might find gaps in your vocabulary. This is a good thing. Filling in these gaps is what will build your skills and increase your ability in the language. If you're not sure how to correct your own journal entries, you might want to try finding a site online which will allow you to upload writing and have it corrected by native speakers. Number four, language exchange with native speakers. A language exchange is a classic way to learn a language. In a language exchange, two people who speak different native languages help each other practice. For example, if you're a native Spanish speaker and are learning English, you would find a native English speaker who is learning Spanish. Partners take turns speaking their target language, and the native speaker provides help and corrections. This is one of the most ideal ways to practice your speaking skills. So, where do you meet native speakers? If you don't live in a country where the language is spoken, your first option is to check around locally. Are there any language clubs or exchanges around your city? Check out meetup websites. You can also check around local universities. If there's a language club that meets nearby, you may be able to find some native speakers. If you can't find a partner or a group to meet with in person, check online. There are a good number of foreign language exchanges, most of which are completely free to use. Number five, work with someone else learning the language. Another great way to sharpen your language skills is to work with another person who is also learning the language. If your level is higher than theirs, you'll learn a lot by trying to teach them or help them understand difficult concepts. If your level is lower, you'll be able to draw from their advice and experience. If nothing else, you have a new language partner to practice with. It's easy to forget sometimes that using a foreign language is actually what makes language learning so fulfilling. Sometimes, after hitting a plateau or struggling with the language, you can forget why you started learning it in the first place. So whether you're learning in a class or you're teaching yourself the language, daily immersion will help you enjoy the language and keep your skills sharp. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.